Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 59 scale Patchbox 1969 Type 14 Carmen Kia Convertible. It came out in the Heritage Classic Series in 2009 and was produced until 2013 as number MB760. I got mine loose in an eBay haul. It's a little bit scratched up and showing a bit worse for wear, but it's a gorgeous little model of a classic car. I'm going to do my best to fulfill one viewer's request on the color of the exterior and the interior of the Carmen Ghia. It's a plastic chassis, all chromed out. I'm going to change that a little bit. It's a two-seater and a bench in the back. There's actually an interesting story about the evolution of that. And this is going to prove to be a challenge to get a little bit of that yellow paint off the outer edges of the windshield but look at this in comparison to a photo of the real car i think matchbox produced the perfect set of wheels so i am definitely not even going to touch those i think they're spot on a couple of upcoming specials i want you to be aware of most importantly the second anniversary of my youtube channel and the second Porsche Invitational, which is a giveaway. And the Four Horsemen build for January is going to be a dairy delivery, a special project for me. So I invite you to get all subbed up to my channel, hit the like button if you enjoy this kind of content, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming, usually Saturday, releases. I often take a moment during the paint stripping process to clean out my hemostats and this set is a year and a half old and still look like brand new. And while I've got the cleaning supplies out, I always give some attention to the parts that are plastic. I pop that stubborn paint stained windshield into a little cup and I let it soak in some brake fluid for a while to loosen it up and I'll do my best to remove that and at the same time drop in the chromed plastic chassis. Special shout out today is Johnny V's Custom Garage in the True Down Under, Tasmania. Johnny's actually the one that called the color of the car when I put this Carmen Ghia out in a winter preview video and you'll see what he came up with he said I actually restored a real one in these specs and I'd love to see you do that so I'd love you to visit Johnny V's channel I left a link in the description he's fairly new on YouTube and I'd like to help him pump those numbers up and get some exposure just a terrific guy doing wonderful work so Johnny V here's to you my buddy hope you're having a great start to the new year and you'll have a wonderful year on your channel too everything has been filed and sanded and degreased so primer is the next step for both the die cast body and this plastic interior And here's the color that Johnny V called. It's a light color and you can barely tell the difference on this first mist coat. But as I lay on a little bit more, probably two or three coats, there it is. It's a Volkswagen pale green. And I went to Google Images to look that up, and this is the closest I got, so I hope it's pretty realistic. While paint is drying, I'm going to work on another mini diorama. I just picked up this hot wire cutter, and I'm using XPS foam, not styrofoam, because it has the highest density, at least in the local build-all stores where I am.
I'm cutting out a series of squares just slightly smaller in dimension than this coffee coaster made of MDF wood that's going to serve as the base. I'm not cutting the XPS foam here, I'm just scoring it lightly with my utility knife and then I take this plastic spatula to sort of open up those lines a little bit more and I'm going to try to create a cobblestone street effect. I live in Europe and these are everywhere. I distressed a few of the squares, removed some, pressed a few down to get some realism. Or, there's another technique. I just 3D printed this roller that has a brick pattern on it. Same XPS foam, and I use a screwdriver as a handle, and with a little bit of pressure, this leaves a perfect relief image. So that can be a brick wall in the future. That could also be a street in Europe. And I printed out a couple of cobblestone patterns so that I could try to recreate the color scheme. It's monochromatic. None of them are perfect. There are always repairs. And I 3D printed a little manhole cover, too. I have spent hours on a bench with a coffee watching the Euro workmen make these old city streets by hand. It's fascinating to me. So I thought it would make an interesting diorama, especially for the glamour shot time. And there it is. I'll just let that white glue set up and in a couple days it'll be my newest display piece for this beautiful car. The Carmen Ghia was marketed in 2 plus 2 coupe versions and 2 plus 2 convertibles. Internally designated the Type 14, the Carmen Ghia combined the chassis and mechanics of the Type 1, which was the Beetle, with styling by Italy's Carrozzeria Ghia and hand-built bodywork by German coach building house Carmen. American industrial designer Walter Dorwin Teague included the Type 14 Carmen Ghia in his list of the world's most beautifully designed products, not just cars. The Type 14 was an immediate success with the public and production doubled in the first year as the Carmen Ghia became the car most imported into the U.S. Did you know that in contrast to the Beetle's machine-welded body with bolt-on fenders, the Carmen Ghia's body panels were butt-welded, ouch, hand-shaped and smoothed with English pewter in a time-consuming process that was commensurate in the day with higher-end manufacturers, which resulted in the Carmen Ghia's higher price range. This convertible version that my casting replicates was released in 1957. And in late 1974, the car was superseded by the Gulf-based Scirocco. The end of a beautiful era of design and production by Volkswagen. This particular casting is super small which makes these fine detail additions very challenging for me, but I'm taking my time and trying to do my best. Every now and then, if I have any overpaint, you'll see me use what I call a liquid eraser, which is a combination 50-50 of nail polish remover and water, and with a toothpick, get the end wet and that usually rubs away any of the little mistakes that I commonly make on these cars. Okay, it's been a while. Everything is cured and dried and set up and ready for reassembly. Beginning with the chrome edged windshield which sits on a post from underneath. 
Johnny V also called the tan interior to match the one-to-one -one restoration that he worked on. I've done a little bit of detail on the chassis and included my channel logo as I often do if there's enough space and that plastic chassis clicks back into place front and back just like that and this little beauty is just about finished that was a fun project for me to work on essentially a cosmetic custom job with a few details that Matchbox overlooked in the beginning Let's have a closer look at that pale green color. The headlights and the front grille are all trimmed up. Custom MLC license plates front and back and some Carmen Ghia tackle work. Oh yeah, I think it's looking very good. Didn't do too much on the bottom there, didn't have to. And remember I said those wheels are so close to the originals, I didn't even touch them. So it's still a great roller. Basically in the beginning it was chipped up a little bit and just well played with as I played with all of my little cars when I was a kid. So it just called for some cosmetic touch-ups and that's what I did my best on today. And I'm very pleased. Johnny V, that is a nice looking color that Volkswagen pale green with the tan interior and I think it looks like it's sitting proud on my cobblestone diorama now. I hope you enjoyed watching that too and it's going to become a gift for some lucky recipient, a little boy or girl, at the local Goodwill shop where I drop off all of my finished cars in a custom blister pack. Thanks for visiting today. I hope you enjoyed this and you'll give it a thumbs up. You're welcome to come back anytime and often. It's coffee time.